is the founder and chairman of COL Financial, the largest online stock brokerage in the country. Let's all welcome to speak on the importance of financial literacy, Mr. Edward Lee. A round of applause for him. Thank you, thank you. Good morning. Morning. Uh, yesterday, I received a text from, uh, received, received an email from uh, the group of uh, Brother Bo, and, uh, because since this is a series of money machines, and uh, they were asking me if I can talk about the stock market, that it is a money-making machine. And I said, I, and I, I, I tried, I tried to look at it and how I can share this with um, the, the audience. And I really came up with the same old, what I call the importance of financial literacy. The reason is very simple, no? because we can't really hard sell the stock market because stock market goes up and down. So it's very, very emotional. And I will explain it later. Uh, so let's start with the, the numbers, no? At the age of 25, most people at least have a job and they are always thinking about looking at it from the next uh, 35 years when you're reaching 60 years old. But what happened is that they don't really understand, like what Brother Arun was saying is that they don't have the mindset, they don't really understand it, no? So what happened is that, you look, look at these numbers. After the age of 60, only 1% will be wealthy. Only 4% will be financially independent. 5% will still need to work. 27% will be dead, hopefully not. 63% will be broke. So those are the numbers at which you have to understand. The sad part today, 65 years old is not enough. The average age now is 80, 85. So can you imagine if you're not mentally prepared for this, you will really have a problem. By the age of 60, probably you're broke already and you don't really know what to do. And you need to be asking your, maybe your children or your relatives to support you. So this afternoon, this is what I will try, this morning, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. This is a scene from Taiwan, which I went in the last few years. We went around the region. And uh, these are the workers, in the semiconductor workers in, in, in Taiwan. And I asked them how many years already they're in the factories. And some of them have said three years, five years, and some of them have been there for the last 12 years. And I asked them why. The salaries are paid well. They don't have to go out. They stay in the dorm. They're, they're basically feed, uh, provided food and lodging. And, but still, they're always struggling. The biggest challenge is because they keep on sending money back here to this country. And their relatives who are not ready goes into business and eventually fails. So these are the major challenges that we're seeing. The second one is what Brother Arun just said a while ago. Very successful athletes, Mike Tyson at the heart of their career, $400 million. Iverson, $200 million. What are the reasons why they still fail also? Right? So they have to be able to understand how this is done properly. Of course, the third one is from Anawim, a project of Brother Bo. And as you can see, is that most of the abandoned elders that joined Anawim are those that are very successful practitioners. Some of them are musicians, professional musicians. Some of them are Teachers, principals, what happened? What really happened to them? They were abandoned because they helped their children, they helped their relatives, but when they get old and sick, their children basically cannot have time to be able to help them settle their medical bills. And what is the reason why all of these are happening? The poor continues to be, have problems, the rich who have done very well also had huge problem. And this is what I called because there is a lack of understanding about the three basic law of money. So this morning, this is what I'm going to talk about. Number one, of course, we all know that, which is just explained by Brother Arun here, is that you need to pay yourself, meaning you need to save. 
10 to 20 percent of what uh, he was explaining a while ago is that 10 to 20 percent you need to set aside. You need to set aside, have that mindset that you need to protect yourself for your financial independence as you get old. Save is the most important. You need to do it. Second, of course, is you need to know how to invest it. The problem today is that because savings is not enough, it takes 72 years to double your money. Can you imagine if you're saving, it takes 72 years just to be able to double. So that's always a challenge. So the next one is the most critical. It's called, you need to know where to put it, how to invest it. So let me share to you why stock, the stock market or the equities market is then the long term will outperform all asset class. So look at these numbers carefully. In the developed market like the US, the average tax return is 9%. Average inflation is about 3%. Today we have a challenge in the Philippines, the average return is about 12 to 15% in, in the stock market. Inflation for the average for the last 20 years is 4.2%. But today, of course, if you look at the newspaper, you're seeing inflation running about 6, 6.5% already. And they are even talking about 7% for the, within next quarter, within this quarter, end of this quarter. But even then, even then, you have to remember, we are emerging markets, so our companies are doing much, much better. So assuming that your inflation is at 7%, you probably your earnings in the company is still about... 11 to 15 percent. So in the end, investing in the stock market over time, long term, will still outperform all asset class. And let me show you some of the numbers. Look at in the U.S. It's called the S&P 500. These are 500 companies that are listed there. And look at it. From the Great Depression to the oil crisis to the Black Monday to all the Nasdaq tech bubble. So the financial deleveraging, today the U.S. market is at its all-time high. What is the reason? So much volatility. The Great Depression, the market went down 80, 90 percent. The Nasdaq bubble went down to about 80 percent in the Nasdaq, in the tech bubble. The deleveraging, most of the big companies, Lehman, AIG, Merrill Lynch, all went down. And the reason is simple. Because stocks, the reason why it continues to go up is because these are companies, a lot of new companies comes in, and it will substitute in the index. The next one is the Philippines. Look at the Philippines. We have, during the 80s, we have six coup d'etat. We have the Asian financial crisis. These are stocks that have gone down 80, 90%. The subprime mortgage in the U.S., Nothing's wrong with the Philippines, but look at the numbers. It went down also 55%. Can you imagine? Nothing wrong in the Philippines, but the market can go down 55%. Today, the stock market is not at an all-time high, but still, if you look at it from a 10 years perspective, it's still outperforming the other asset classes. Let me show you numbers. Numbers about how this is compared to all the different time deposit or all the money market that is available right now. If you invest in the stock market, if you invest in the a million pesos, 2002, in the time deposit, you will probably yield 2.16%. Yes, today it's much higher. Today it's about 4% already. We're seeing the rise of interest rates. But these are statistics that we have. Till 2018, you probably make 1.4 million pesos. The number one bank in the Philippines today is BDO. Look at the numbers. If you invest in BDO a million pesos in 2002, the return is 7 million pesos, which is a compounded rate of return of also 13%. So we are still... Investing in BDO is still much, much higher than the money market or the fixed income time deposit. The next one is, of course, is BPI. If you invest 2,002, a million pesos in BPI, look at the numbers. It's about 9.7% today by the end of 2018, 4.3 million. 
But can you imagine if you started early, BPI, during that time, in let's say 10 years earlier, you would see that the same 1 million pesos you start earlier, by the end of 2018, it's worth 23.9 million pesos. A return of the same, 11.68% compounded rate of return. But indirectly, this is time. Not timing the market, but the time that you invest in the market will yield you those kind of returns. And that's one of the reasons why today, the Archdiocese of Manila is the third richest diocese in the world because of their investment. They're, they own more than 10%. They've been in, investing in uh, BPI for the last maybe more than 100 years. So you can see that time in the market is the most critical. Not too much on timing the market because market goes up and down. The next, of course, is that we do a comparison between the Makati Central Business District and, of course, all of you knows that Ayala Land owes it, the Ayala Corporation owes it. And you can see that the difference is that a million pesos invested in the land itself yields you 10%, while if you invest in Ayala Land, it yields you 10 million pesos. So as you can see is that why are we saying is that if you are investing in the market and you have the time element with you, it's long term, you will be able to get a better return than buying the physical asset if you have the money to be able to buy the physical assets. The third most important is what we call the miracle of compounding. What is this? So in other words, what we have is that the three basic laws starts with saving, pay yourself, because if you don't pay yourself, you will have a problem later on. Saving is not enough. It takes 72 years to double your money. Then you have to pick an asset, choose an asset to invest. And what we're saying that if you're starting, if you're a starter, you have to start small. Today, in fact, I was just sharing that uh, just a few minutes ago with Brother Rex, is that Sun Life, Atram, or even AIG, the minimum to open an account for a mutual fund is 1,000 pesos already. So you can have access into the stock market, buying all these basket of companies. I just start with 1,000 pesos and have that mindset, have that discipline to continue to be just able to, to put it in. And look at this, the third, which is the reinvesting so that you can benefit from the power of compounding. Look at it carefully. If you invest at the age of 25 and you were able to put in 5,000 pesos and continue to just do it, you can see the numbers very well. At the age of 25, 25 years old, 10% compounded rate of return, look at it. By the age of 60, 65, you would have made 11 million pesos. A 10% compounded rate of return. So that means a 35 years of investing from just simple 5,000 pesos a year. If, oh, sorry, it's 2,000 pesos a year. But if you put it at 5,000 pesos a year, you probably will make almost 29 million. Exactly what Brother Arun was saying. If you know how to do it properly, if you know and understand and ready and have that discipline, it's really no excuse for you to not to be able to become a millionaire at a very young age. At a very young age. The sad part about all this is that most people, I'll give you an example. My driver has been investing, same as uh, Gina, the last seven years. Slowly, every time, every month, he puts in 2,000 pesos. Since 2011. Whenever he puts 2,000 pesos, I will also invest with him the 2,000 pesos so that he can do it for his retirement. The funny thing is that two years ago, his money has grown. He said, boss, pwede ba gusto kong bumili ng isang motorcycle? Isang motorcycle. 
I said, bakit mo gustong bilhin yan? Kasi boss, kasi pag pupunta ako sa bahay, dalawang oras. Pauwi, dalawang oras. Pwede ba, bumili ako ng motorcycle, cost me about 50,000 pesos. Para, within 15 minutes, nasa bahay na ako. Ano sinabi ko? Siyempre pwede. But that's the problem. As he take out 50,000 from his account, and then last year, he bought another 100,000 pesos to buy a piece of property, which I cannot say no because that's what he needs. He's way behind Gina, the middle brother Bo. Right? So in other words, this is what we call the miracle of compounding. When you're investing in the market, when you're putting in, you should be very careful to, not to take out the money because that will do a reset. So you're not compounding it. So look at this chart very well. Is that if you invest and pull out the dividends every year, you're only making what? From how, how many years? 10 years? 100 years? It's $100. But if you continue to just reinvest the dividends, it compounds by itself. The reason why Gina is outperforming my driver, Hildo, is mainly because Gina continues to just invest it, in it. While my driver from time to time will take out some money. And of course, eventually he will still reach his 1 million pesos. Right? But in between, it will take longer. So that's why I understand the miracle of compounding. You need to reinvest it so that you can benefit from all of this. So, how do we make it work? So you have to have that mindset. You have to understand how this is, how we do it. Number one, is that you have to believe in the Philippine growth story. Kailangan maniniwala ka. With all the noise that you're hearing every day, inflation, high prices, food security, drugs, corruption, whatever. You have to believe in the Philippine growth story. Now, let me share with you what is this Philippine growth story. The average age, demographics-wise, average age in the Philippines is 23 to 24 years old. The world really loves the Philippines. I always joke about it. The world loves the Philippines except us, the Filipinos. This is reason so sad. You know why? Simple. Because every time there's a corruption, every time there's a problem, we're always looking for opportunity to go outside. More than 10 million people sends in 26 to 28 billion dollars a year. The heroes of the Filipino people, the OFWs. They work so hard, they basically continue to have hope that they will go outside and they will make money and then send in 26 to 28 billion a year. The BPO, the world, loves the Philippines, so they bring in their operations here. The BPOs, the back office processing, are all here. They also contribute 26 to 28 billion dollars a year. So more than 50 to 60 billion comes in without the government doing anything. These are because of the love of the Filipinos, of this country. So you have to believe that that will continue to come in. Even all the noises, even all the problems, palaging pumapasok yan. 50 to 60 billion pesos. Can you imagine if the government really puts their act together and try to build all this infrastructure, try to make sure that food security is available, and I'm sure they will be able to do it. In fact, yesterday I was in a business forum and the undersecretary was talking about it and I was so impressed. I said, may pag-asa pala ang Pilipinas kung anong ginagawa nila. So impressed. First time, I really went and I tried to listen to these people and I was very, very impressed that there are people, very successful people, executives, join the government just to be able to see by 2040, their children will also have a very good life that we will be considered as a developed market. Very, very, I was very, very happy that I attended that conference. So once you believe in that Philippine growth story, you also have to believe that over time, the stock market will continue to outperform. Because the stock market goes up because as the demographics, population growth grows up, 
what happened? Companies will do well. Right? When you build infrastructure, there will be more benefits from all these companies. It will be easier. What we call the friction cost, the cost of logistics. Once you build those infrastructures, easier to access. Price of commodities, price of food will go down. So that is very critical. What the government is doing today is very critical. So you have to believe in this Philippine growth story. And the only way is that you have to participate in it. Now, how do you participate in it? You have to also believe that all the best CEOs, the companies that you know daily, day in, day out, you have to know that these people are working for all of us. There was an event that I, that I also was giving a chance to give a talk. And I was, uh, and then at that time, the chairwoman, the CEO of uh, BDO was there, uh, Tessie Coson, the, the family. And I was just sharing with everybody. He said, can you imagine the best CEO of the land, the Philippines, is all working for us. Do you want it? Gusto ba ninyo? Wala kang ginagawa. Nasa, nasa bahay ka lang, nag-i-invest ka lang sa kanila. And of, over time, do you think anything will happen to BDO? Do you think anything will happen to the SM group, to the Ayala group? No, they will forever be here. We will be gone. They will still be here. So you need to believe that. Because if you don't believe that and you're seeing the noises that are coming in day in, day out, you will be scared of investing in the market. So these are the factors that you have to understand. That the best CEOs are all working for all of us. The sad part about the stock market is because, because of the problems that we see every day, global problems, local internal problems, then you get scared. Look at this. this. I have to understand what we call the emotional cycle of investing. Look at it carefully. When the market is going up, people put more money in. But in reality, the returns are less. When the market starts going down, you get nervous. And today, probably, you're already in fear. But look at it six months to a year. Maybe a year or two years later. These are the best times to be able to invest in the market. Because the returns are going to be much, much higher. Right? So by understanding the emotional cycle and investing, you know, the funny part is that whenever there's a sale in SM, are you there? I think when there's a sale of 50%, nandiyan na tayo lahat eh. Di ba? But pag the stock market may sell, my God, we should be getting out already because it's worse than it's supposed to be in the next few months. That's what people don't understand. In other words, you need to understand that buying good companies over time will do very well because of the big macro picture. Look at, look at the volatility in the Philippine market for the last five years. Look at, it, look at it carefully. What do you see? Market has been going down 10, 20, 30%. This is within the five years. If you... Bought it 2013 up to today, you probably are not making money. Probably less than 2-3% lang. And that's the sad part. That's the sad part, right? But in reality, you need all these crashes to have higher returns. Because without those crashes, you won't be able to buy cheap. The amount of money that you have, you cannot buy more. And those are the reasons why we share this all the time with you. Is that you have to think long term, passive investment long term. Buy an index fund, right? It's all available today. One thousand pesos, two thousand pesos. Just have that discipline to continue to just pay yourself for your future, so that you will have financial freedom. Because without that, not putting in the discipline, you will have a bigger issue. Because what will happen? And I'm so sure. Is that when you're investing in a market and the market goes down and you don't put in the money, what will happen is that when the market goes up, then magahabul kapa. Then you'll try to buy more when its market's on top. So the discipline is critical. A fixed amount of money, whenever it's, when the discipline is there, 10% for tithing, 20% for investment, 70%, you can spend it. That 20% has to be there, whether you're making only 20,000 pesos, 20%, 4,000 pesos. Have that discipline. Have that discipline and understand 
How to do it? Peso cost average. A lot of people question about peso cost average. But if you're building your wealth, that's the only method to be able to outperform. I was just sharing with Brother Boy a while ago. There's a student in our school. She came to see me yesterday. Sir, picture naman tayo. I said, okay, so how long have you been in the market? I've been in the market since 2012. I started with the, the easy investment program of COL. I did very well. So why are you here in this class? Sir, kasi ang bagal ng easy investment program eh. Kaya nag, nag short-term trading siya. She participated in what we call active trading the market. Trying to guess what's the bottom, what's the top, and also participated in all what we call the penny stocks in the market. And I've been sharing that with a lot of people. If you don't know the rules, you will basically lose money. So then I asked, so what happened? I lost it all. Naubos niya ang pera. Yung mga kinita niya sa EIP, naubos niya ang pera sa kakasugal. And that's the reason why she attended our school. It's an eight weeks program to basically teach them how to do it properly. Because without proper understanding of the rules, you will not be able to make it. That's why short-term trading is so dangerous, very dangerous, if you don't know the rules of the game. And if you don't have money, you don't know where to get your money, this is my favorite slide. So no excuse to end. Kanina, we teach you that you should save 10, 20%. Now I'm teaching you where to get the money. All right? Look at this. It's called the latte factor. I've been sharing this source so many times, and every time I share it, I really felt so good. Right? Look at this. Latte factor is a metaphor for all those small purchases that we don't even consider. Things we wind up wasting our money on without even realizing it. So I'm sure a lot of you go to Starbucks. I sh I'm sure also that Starbucks hates me because I've been, and I go to Starbucks every day, right? That's the sad part. And whenever I'm with my daughter, go to the counter, the, the lady would say, short Americano. She knows my order. And she also, when, when she sees my daughter, my daughter will be, alam niya yung bibigay sa kanya, a hot water. Hot water lang ang hinihingi niya. A cup of hot water. And we will go once I get the order, we'll go to the side, and ang alun gagawin niya, she will pick up her three-in-one San Miguel Extra Strong. Probably now, what, about eight to nine pesos. So she saves 100, 120 pesos a day. She only drinks one coffee a day. A lot of the youth today basically spends for 150 pesos, 200 pesos. They don't understand if they go to Mini Stop or Mac Cafe, you probably pay, what, 29, 30 pesos for that. You can save the difference. Now let me show you the difference. This is the huge difference. If you can save 150 pesos based on a 10% return on the stock market, the stock market is about 10 to 12%. Huh? 10 to 12%. Can you imagine at a very young age, if you know this, the latte factor that you basically just goes to the 7-Eleven, mini stop, get their coffee, or use the three-in-one, and save that 112, 120 pesos, 150 pesos. If you can save 200 pesos a day and start investing, come up with a program, and just wait it out. 10 years, there is no excuse for, not, for all of you not to be a millionaire. Very simple lang yan. So that's one of the things that I'm always being out, trying to explain this to the masses, to the mass retail. It's just, there is really no excuse. And exactly what Brother Arun said, you should have that mindset. Because only with that mindset that you will become successful. So let me close by just sharing. It's very simple. Three basic law of money that you need to save, pay yourself. You need to know where to invest it. And you need to understand how to reinvest it so that you can be very successful and have financial freedom. Thank you very much.